Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1983 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Detroit Tigers and the New York Yankees at Yankee Stadium. On the mound for the Tigers today is Jack Morris, whose record is 12-4 with a 3.57 ERA. And pitching for the Yankees today is Scott Sanderson, whose record is 11-4 with a 3.94 ERA. And so the Tigers lost their fourth game in a row. This is coming off winning seven in a row. Uh, I felt like we were finally uh, turning the corner, but we turned the corner right back into ourselves, I guess. Because we lost four to nothing yesterday. Ron Guidry, he was uh, just dominating. Uh, I think we had five hits. Uh, George Brett had two of them, which was impressive because both hits came against the left-hander. Uh, so that was good. He was a player of the game yesterday, but otherwise uh, not a very good performance uh, from our bullpen. Um, uh, uh, Brian Kelly. Brian Kelly pitched three scoreless innings, but he walked five batters. Um, so he's not going to be available today because of that. But uh, So I, what I want to show you here before we get started with uh, today's ball game is uh, Jeremy DeYoung, who is the artist who creates our baseball cards for this uh, video series. He actually found this, this card right here, I'm going to show you, uh, of Paul Gibson's son, Glenn. Glenn Gibson. So apparently the Creeper, he was involved with a woman at some point of his career. Uh, so yeah, I mean... I mean, I'm not going to allege anything specifically, but he has a son, and his son played uh, in minor league baseball. So, uh, congrats to the Creeper, and uh, <laughs> I want to follow that up by showing you this card here. Here is the Brainiac Baseball Paul Gibson The Creeper baseball card. This card is going to be a one-of-one. Here coming shortly. I actually saw the cards today. Uh, they'll be shipped, I would imagine, relatively soon. We're going to have a complete set of 15 cards um, uh, that are going to be numbered three of three. So there's going to be three cards made of each card only. One complete set for my own personal collection, one complete set for Jeremy's collection, and then I'm going to individually give away each individual card. Uh, in a contest. On top of that, there's going to be three cards, including this Paul Gibson card, that is going to be a one-of-one one, uh, giveaway. I'm not going to own one. Jeremy's going to, he has the proofs, but he's not. he doesn't have one either, okay? So um, I can't wait to show you the other two cards in that collection. But uh, yeah, the Paul Gibson one-of-one that is uh, probably the pride and joy of the collection. So um, let's go ahead and get started with today's game. I'll keep you guys uh, apprised of when uh, those cards get uh, completed and shipped to me. Uh, we will have a bigger contest involved with those cards. Uh, here's Jack Morris. He is our ace, and we need him to step up today to break this four-game losing streak against the Yankees. Uh, as you can tell here, Brian Kelly won't be available today or tomorrow. Uh, he he did pitch those three scoreless innings. So, uh, but the rest of the bullpen is available. Uh, oh, of note, uh, the Yankees' current lineup betting 238 versus Morris. So he has had some success versus the Yankees. Uh, we're going to be facing Scott Sanderson, who's a right-hander. Switched out a couple of of the batters. Uh, I was I thought that Lance Parrish was going to take off in the second half. He did. He hasn't even had a hit yet. So we're going to put Terry Kennedy in there, who's also struggling. Get him back in there. And uh, Mickey Hatcher will have the day off. We're going to get Greg Brock at the DH position today. Okay, let's go ahead and do the official Tigers lineup rundown. Betting leadoff, playing second base is Sweet Lou Whitaker. Betting second in center field is Ricky Henderson. Batting third and DHing is Greg Brock. Batting cleanup, playing first base is Eddie Murray. Batting fifth, playing third base is George Brett. Batting sixth, playing shortstop is Alan Trammell. 
Batting seventh in left field is Kirk Gibson. Batting eighth in right field is Glenn Wilson. And batting ninth and catching today is Terry Kennedy. Let's take a look at Scott Sanderson of the Yankees in his second season. He was traded midseason last year, made 20 starts. He's making his 20th start this year. He's 11-4 with a 394 ERA, 92 Ks, and 134 and two-thirds innings pitched. Opponents are batting 278 against him. He's got one complete game. Uh, his fastball tops out at 89 miles an hour. His ground ball percentage is 41.9. He's got four pitches in his arsenal, but his fastball is his best pitch. Uh, and the only pitch above 80, which is the league average. A slow curve and a slider below it, uh, below 80 and uh, a changeup that uh, barely exists. Um, his overall rating is 85, the 26-year-old right-hander. He goes to free agency in 1985. Has he faced the Tigers this year? Let's take a look at his log. Yes, he has faced us twice. He got a win on April 9th, going six and two-thirds, giving up nine hits and three runs. No walks, six Ks. That's a pretty decent performance. And then on May 25th, he got a no decision going six and a third, giving up three runs on seven hits. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, Yankees' defense. Looks like it is the same as the first two games of the series. They have five gold glovers out there. And we've got Sweet Lou leading it off against Scott Sanderson. Lou batting 281, 13 home runs, strikes out looking. Oh, my gosh. This is not... Uh, I hope it's not the omen that we're uh, accustomed to seeing early. There's a ground ball to short. Henderson out at first as Ozzy Smith makes a smooth play. Two down. Greg Brock steps in. 313 hitter, 12 home runs, and he walks. Always count on Brock getting on base. Runner on first. Switch hitter, Eddie Murray up. Murray batting 313 versus righties as a left-hander. And a tapper back to Sanderson. We strand Brock at first. We go to the bottom of the first inning. Here's the lineup for the Yankees today versus Jack Morris. Batting leadoff, playing second base is Willie Randolph. Batting second at shortstop is Ozzie Smith. Batting fifth and DHing is Otis Nixon. Batting cleanup in left field is Steve Kemp. Batting fifth and catching is Ron Hassey. Batting sixth at third base is Joe Lefave. Batting seventh at first base is Dennis Wirth. Batting eighth in center field is Lee Mazzilli. And batting ninth in right field is Claudel Washington. Okay, let's take a look at Jack Morris. Jack, he's making his 20th start, 12-4 on the season. Almost won as many games as he did all last year. He's got a 357 ERA, 93 Ks, and 133 innings pitched. Opponents are batting 238 against him. He's got two complete games. Both were shutouts. His fastball tops out at 94 miles an hour. He is a uh, ground ball percent of uh, 43.9%. Uh, he's got four pitches. Splitter is his best, rated at 94, followed by a fastball at 89 and a slider at 81. Overall rated at 87, the 28-year-old right-hander becomes a free agent next year. Looking at his log, uh, the Yanks, the Yanks. Wait a minute, this can't be right. He has never faced the Yankees this season? That is incorrect, because he did on opening day. No, wait. No, it was Boston, right? Yeah, so he's not faced the Yankees. Well, wow, that's just the luck of the draw for the Yankees. So maybe Morris has the upper hand today. As you take a look at the Tigers' defense, Gold Glovers at first, second, and center field today. Okay, here's Willie Randolph leading off against Jack. Two for 13 in his career. A comebacker to Morris. And Morris throws him out. One down. The Wizard of Oz up next. Batting 259, no home runs. 
In fact, he has not had a home run since his rookie year in 1978. Crazy. Okay, two down. Here's Otis Nixon. This is the guy we got to keep off the base path. He single-handedly beat us yesterday as he strikes out looking. So a good first inning for Morris. We head to the top of the second. Here is George Brett leading off. Brett had a couple base hits yesterday. Hopefully turning the corner. Another ground ball back to the pitcher. And Sanderson boots it. Brett is safe at first. So leadoff man is on. That means hit and run. Trammell, probably the hottest hitter on the team right now, batting 294, 12 home runs. And another comebacker to Sanderson. Come on. Brett advances to second on the hit and run. That's going to bring up Gibby. Gibby, painfully horrible right now. Average below 250. Ground ball to first. That'll get Brett over. And this is where we've been struggling. We, of course, we were shut out yesterday, but we are, have been so bad with runners in scoring position. Let's see if Wilson can come through for us. Nope. High fly ball to left field. Where Kemp makes the catch. So we strand a runner on third, go to the bottom of the second. And Kemp leading off. Kemp, 311, 22 home runs, leading in homers and RBI. Base hit to center field, and Kemp is on first. That's the first hit of the ball game. Runner on first. Here's Ron Hassey. Definitely a double play possibility here. And Kemp was stealing. Why are they running wild on us right now? Thankfully, Kennedy finally caught somebody. Uh, he got off to a great start throwing runners out, and I can't even think of the last time he uh, threw someone out as Hassey gets a base hit to center field. So, again, a runner on first for Joe LeFave. One down, and Morris walks him. All right, well, now I... Don't think there's much we're going to be able to do here. We're going to guard the lines. Maybe uh, increase our chances at a double play possibility. There's a ground ball to first. Murray turns two. Three, six, one, double play. The ground ball gets, out of, gets us out of the inning. And we go to the top of the third. No score with Terry Kennedy leading off, followed by Whitaker and Ricky B. Ricky. And he strikes out. While we are getting no production from our catcher spot. And I don't, like, for whatever reason, we have stopped hitting altogether. Um, I don't know if we've reached that point in the season where all the uh, numbers have to get uh, recalibrated or something as a Whitaker gets a base hit at least. There's no point hitting and running here. Let's just see if Ricky can come through. It's been a while. And he flips it to right. At least he made contact. Out number two. Let's see if Greg Brock can step up here. Nope. Fly ball to right. Man, we are just absolutely brutal to play. That's right. Need a little swig there. Bottom of the third. We got Lee Mazzilli. Leading off, 284 hitter, two home runs. Sharp ground ball to Lou. Out number one. Next up is Claudel Washington. He's got one home run in his career against Morris. Inside pitch that Randolph gets around on. At least sends a fly ball to center. Two down, we're back to the top of the lineup with Willie Randolph. And Randolph pops it up. Whitaker makes the catch in the outfield grass behind second base. So we go to the top of the fourth inning. Gabe is moving along. Yesterday's game, the shutout was only 25 minutes. 
um, with with uh, including the the pregame and the postgame. So it's a pretty pretty quick event. We don't get too many of those. Um, I could just push the button right now and just not think about it. There's there's nothing we can do against the uh, Yankees pitchers. I don't know if it's Yankee Stadium. Maybe that's having an effect as Trammell gets a hit. We're going to send him. May as well. We've been caught stealing, I believe, three times in a row. Gibby at the plate, and Trammell will be on the move. Fastball right down the middle, and we're thrown out again. Ron Hassey, one of the worst arms in the major leagues, and he's up to 34%. Uh, it, well, I mean, he does have good range. His defensive war is up there. And he is a gold glove winner. Only seven errors. Oh, my God. How do you go from six errors to 26 errors to seven errors? That's crazy. Well, let's see if that changes uh, the pace of the game here. Getting caught on the base path usually turns things in the other direction as Smith will ground it to Whitaker. One out. Here's Otis Nixon. We're going to pull the outfield in. I mean, I just don't want any, any balls to drop in if I can avoid it. There's a strikeout. Only the second K for Morris. If he got seven today, he would hit 100. He is among the uh, top 25 in pitchers. And then he walks. Our, our pitchers cannot find the plate. Um, we had 10 walks in game one. We had eight walks yesterday. We have two so far today with our ace on the mound. Hassey flies out to center, so we're scoreless through four. Here's Gibby. He was at the plate when Trammell was thrown out. A blooper into right center field. It will be caught by Washington. One out. That will bring up Glenn Wilson. Yeah, I mean, we're not getting any hard contact. We haven't had an extra base hit in what seems like forever. Oh, there we go! Terry Kennedy, a solo shot to right center field. That's near Monument Park. Nicely done from Terry Kennedy. His seventh home run on the year, and finally a catcher does one thing right. And then a base hit for Whitaker. That's his second hit today. We're going to send Whitaker. Why not? 69% chance. We have the lead. Two down. <laughs> Let's try to get somebody in a scoring position. Fastball down the middle. And we're successful. That's a miracle right there. That is his eighth stolen base. He is now eight for 13 on the year. Not, not ever Whitaker's game. That's the one thing that was different between Whitaker and Trammell. A lot of their numbers are very similar uh, for their entire career as Ricky strikes out. But Trammell had the stolen base uh, numbers over Whitaker by a large margin, if I recall correctly. So we have the one nothing lead headed to the bottom of the fifth. Morris is only at 46 pitches with Joe Lefebvre stepping in. Slider inside. Well, it says a fastball, but that cut in on his hands. There's one down. Dennis Worth up next. Worth gets the base hit to right. That's his first hit of the day. One down, runner on first. Mazzilli not a contact hitter. Uh, Worth could be going here, I would imagine. It's a possibility. And a strikeout of Mazzilli leaves it up to Claudel Washington to keep the inning alive. That's three Ks for Morris. And a base hit into right field just past Whitaker. Worth has to hold at second. Uh, we're going to bring the outfield in. We know Randolph is not going to hit a dong. So let's try to prevent a run scoring on a base hit. I, I have no, that's a really great strategy. 
I have no idea if that actually works in the game. But if I were a real manager and a, a batter was up in this situation, that's what I would do. I don't know if bringing the outfield in, although it is an option, I don't know if that actually prevents anything. As is the base hit to right. Will worst score? He doesn't. See, I, I mean, who knows what would have happened. That is Glenn uh, Wilson out in right field, though, although he did have an error the other day. I mean, he's a, worthy of a gold glove. So now we have Ozzie Smith, and Ozzie won the ball game in, the, in game one in a situation just like this. We have to trust that Morris can get Ozzie. We're going to play straight away. That way you can get a force at any base. 0-1 count and a base hit. Oh, no, it's going to be stagged by Whitaker, and that's out number three. That looked like a surefire base hit up the middle, but Whitaker has decent range. And we keep the Yankees off the board. So some close calls. We head to the top of the six. Let's take a look at the in-game stats. Uh, I guess despite Whitaker being two for three with a stolen base, I mean, Kennedy did hit the home run. That has given us the lead. And Morris has got a shutout going on. So, Okay, here is uh, Greg Brock. Walked his first time up. Look at that 620 slugging percentage versus righties. And he can't really get into the lineup. Scorches it to center. Caught by Mazzilli. One down. Here's Eddie Murray. Murray rips it down the right field line. That's going to be off the wall for a double. Murray pulls into second. That is Murray's eighth double on the season. Something we don't <laughs> do a lot as a team. I did look, um, Mickey Hatcher leads our team with 12 doubles, and we're well beyond the halfway point. Okay, so runner in scoring position for George Brett. Brett's 0 for 2 today. Hey, there's a base hit for Brett into center field. Murray scores. Do we want to go for 2? Uh, no, we're not going to run on the gold lover. We will hit and run. Try to keep uh, the pressure on here as Trammell steps up. He's one for two today. Oh, he swings and misses on that slow curve. And Brett steals second base. Brett does have, um, oh shoot, I guess he doesn't. I was thinking Brett actually had some pretty decent stolen base skills. You see, twice in his career, he did have over 20 stolen bases, but he was a youngster. All right. So, Brett in scoring position, and it's an 0-1 count to Trammell. 3-1. Fly ball into right center field. Brett, 70% chance. Uh, yeah, we are going to... We're going to test Claudel Washington. Here we go. 70% chance, and he is safe at third. Okay, so maybe the tide is turned on our base running uh, because Whitaker stole that base successfully and now Brett's advanced. So, can Gibby get him in? He's 0 for 2 today. Batting 252 versus righties. And a base hit through the left side. Brett trots home easily. Gibby with an RBI single and it's 3 nothing Detroit. Now we're going to send Gibson... Gibby, his um, stolen base percentage, I believe, is below 50%. No, it's actually at 50%. This is a guy that stole 29 bases last year, and he's struggling. So we're going to send Gibby. With two down. Wilson at the plate. And, yeah, that was right down the middle. So there goes our advantage on the base path, as now Gibson is 7 for 15 on this season. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Tigers get two runs. It's 3-0 with Otis Nixon leading off versus Jack Morris. Morris strikes out Nixon for the third time today. Fourth overall. Next up is Steve Kemp. Sharply hit ground ball to Tremel. Tremel throws him out. That's going to bring up Ron Hassey. Hassey, 6 for 17 in his career with a dong. And Morris strikes him out. That's exactly what we needed. 
after uh, putting two runs on the board. We go to the top of the seventh inning with Glenn Wilson leading off. He was on, uh, he was on uh, at the plate when uh, Gibson was thrown out. Pulls it into left. Caught by Kemp, one down. That's going to bring up Terry Kennedy. He had the solo shot, his seventh on the year. And he's going to get an infield single. The catcher is going to beat it out with that 62 speed. He probably gets infield singles as frequently as uh, Mickey Hatcher gets walks. So we've got a runner on first. Here is Sweet Lou. He's two for three with a stolen base today. And a ground ball to second. That's going to be an easy double play. Oh, no! Whitaker beats it out. That should have been two. I don't know. Um, Randolph, he's got a gold glove. But the infield single was to him, and then the double play that did not happen was also to Randolph. Here's Ricky. Ricky is just hot garbage right now as he fouls out to the third base side. 0 for 4. And his average is down to 254. And he's in his walk season. You'd think he would pick up the pace. Nonetheless, we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Tigers are up three. We've got Joe Lefebvre, Dennis Wirth, and Lee Mazzilli. Wow. That pitch was so far outside. S strikeout number six. Morris needs one more to hit the century mark. Could Dennis Worth be the next victim? Nope, a comebacker to Morris. There's out number two. That'll leave it up to Lee Mazzilli. Ground ball to Brett at third. And there's out number three. Morris putting up goose eggs. We go to the top of the eighth with Greg Brock leading off. Sanderson at 91 pitches. He has been efficient today. He's only walked one. Greg Brock, man, I thought he was going to have a good game today. He was my pick to click. Popping out into foul ground. There's one down. Here's Eddie Murray. He's one for three with a double. And Murray walks. I think we're going to let Brett take a cut here. Brett had a big RBI, gave us an insurance run. And a base hit into center field. Brett is turning it around. What is his average now as a Tiger? He's batting 269. So he's, he's coming around now. Okay, first and second, one down. Trammell up, he's one for three on the day. And a ground ball to third around the horn. Yes. Six, four, three. Double play. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Claudel Washington will lead off. Followed by Randolph and Smith. There's another comebacker. How many have we had today? Someone keeping track? Who's scoring at home? There's at least six. Because there was three in the first inning and a half. A ground ball from Willie Randolph. Tigers defense looking good today. Let's see what happens in the ninth. And a ground ball to first. Murray steps on the base, and that'll do it. And that'll do it for Scott Sanderson. He hits the showers. Kurt Kaufman steps in. Let's take a look at Kurt Kaufman. He is their closer. He got injured early on in the season. They sent him to the minors after his uh, um, stint on the injured list. And then they left them down there for nine games. They called him back, put him back in the safe uh, situations, and he's been looking good. Oh, he's got a 97-mile-an-hour fastball. His ground ball percentage is 46.9%. His fastball is a 99. Holy cow. I think that's the first one we've seen. I wonder if uh, Nolan Ryans is a 99. It should be, right? Overall rated in 86. He's a 25-year-old righty who goes to arbitration at the end of this year. He has not given up a home run this year after giving up nine last year. 
We've got seven, eight, and nine due up, starting with Gibson. Well, Gibby gets around on it. Looks like he sawed him off. Falls in for a base hit. Little duck snort. Do we want to go for two? We do not. We'll let Glenn Wilson hit and run. Wilson 0 for 3 today. And a tapper back to the mound. Kaufman. And another error from a pitcher. So I guess maybe that's the team weakness. That should be our overall team strategy. Just hit every pitch back to the pitcher and let him make an error. So second and third. Kennedy at the plate. One swing of the bat can pretty much end this small game. Kennedy walks. Now the base is loaded for Lou. Um, yeah, okay, we're going to let Lou take a cut. I mean, bases are loaded. Nobody out. Here we go. 1-1 one, one count. Ground ball to short. A double play. A run scores. No RBI for Whitaker. But we do add the all-important insurance run, making it 4 to nothing. And then Ricky does what Ricky does, which is nothing. Oh, it's a walk. Um, okay, let's do a Greg Brock Scott. Brock is over three with a walk today. He's due for a big hit. That's not going to get it done. Grounder to Randolph, and we go to the bottom of the ninth. So we push one run across. It could have been bigger. Should have been. And Morris... Although there are a lot of lefties coming up, he's only at 95 pitches. And again, he's one strikeout away. So we're going to give him a shot to wrap up this ball game on his own. Starting with Otis Nixon, who is a pest. He's over three. Golden Sobrero. Infield single. Yeah, that's that's the start of something bad for Detroit. Here's Steve Kemp. I mean, Nixon might be hitting and running. There's no reason for you to run. Base hit. Yep. We're in trouble. We are in real trouble here. All we can do is hope for a double play. Ron Hassey strikes out looking. Okay. That's strikeout number 100 on the season for Morris. That will bring up Joe Lefebvre. Three for 16 in his career. Oh, he walks him. I mean, <laughs> I mean what are we going to do? I guess we, we're going to leave him in there. We're going to leave him in there. This is his game to lose. One swing of the bat from Worth, and the game is tied. Dennis Worth does have a home run in his career versus Jack. 0-2 count. A pop-up on the infield. Trammell fading back into shallow left field. He catches it. There we go. And we are down to the last out. Will this be a shutout for Morris? We've got Rucker up in the pen. He is our new closer. This will probably be the last batter one way or another. Here we go. Oh, two count. He strikes him out. Here we go. We show a little faith in Jack. Tigers win 4 to nothing. Same as we lost yesterday. Handshakes, butt slaps, sloppy steaks. Okay, let's take a look at these standings. So we got one out of three from the Yankees at Yankee Stadium. Um, we're one and a half up on the Yankees, one and a half up on Boston. Baltimore falls back to six. Um, okay, yeah, we go back home and face the Twinkies next. Let's take a look at headline news. Um, I apparently missed something in one of these games yesterday, Tony Brewer went two for four to raise his average to 313. Brewer has now hit safely in 30 consecutive games. That is incredible. Uh, thanks to James K, who uh, we always credit as being the writer for these, but uh, he's the one that pointed it out. So um, that's incredible. Brian Harper gets four hits for... Uh, in the Angels' route. The Angels, uh, yeah, he did some stuff. Uh, he went four for five, a double, a home run. Three runs scored, five runs batted in. 
That is an all-star level catcher. Mike Brown. Uh, he did some stuff. Okay. Uh, six nothing shutout for Roy Branch. I actually did a little research about the Seattle Mariners yesterday because that's what I do when I get bored. Roy Branch was part of the 1977 uh, inaugural draft. Um, one of the, I think it was a third round draft pick uh, in the very first ever draft for the Seattle Mariners. And now you know. Um, Roy Branch. Oh, I like the quotes when there's, because I don't know how these quotes make it in. Uh, Texas batters agree. Okay, we all just stood up there frozen. And before we knew it, we were back on the bench again. Uh, Roy Branch pitched strongly for nine innings. Dave Stapleton uh, went two for four. Harold Reynolds went one for four. He had a stolen base. Having a rough go in the last five games. And here we go. Jack Morris showed up at Drizzly Yankee Stadium to witness a masterful performance by Morris. Tigers beat the Yankees 4 to nothing. He had no earned runs. It's also known as a shutout on seven hits in nine innings. George Brett went two for four. He might be the player of the game again, but uh, it was Terry Kennedy who had the uh, game-winning RBI with the home run, so we, we probably will give it to him. Let's take a look at transactions. Trade deadline coming up. Nothing. Nobody can be bothered. Um... Mike Norris, yeah, we saw that. So and John Stupert, we saw all these, right? Seventeenth, we're on the nineteenth. Yeah, so there's been nothing for two days. Weird. Let's pull up the box score and get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and or subscribe. Uh, player of the game. I guess we're gonna give it to Terry Kennedy. Uh, well, Jack Morris threw a no a shutout. I mean, let's give it to Jack Morris. That's what we're gonna do. It's uh, Jack Morris's thirteenth victory. He is thirteen and four. His third complete game, his third shutout on the season, lowering his ERA to 3.34. Kennedy ha did have the big po uh, bop in the uh, fourth, fifth inning. And uh, Eddie Murray did have a double, so we had a couple extra base hits for a change. Two stolen bases, one by Whitaker, one by Brett, and we were caught twice as well. Scott Sanderson suffers a loss. He's 11-5. and five. So now we go home. We're going to face the Minnesota Twins, a weird and tough team. Um, with a pretty decent pitching staff and a good future. Um, they have a lot of good young players. So we're going to see uh, how they fare at Tiger Stadium. Until tomorrow, everyone, have a great night.